Meaning is about making connections. It's about perceiving patterns that link apparently disparate phenomena. Since meaning is about making connections, when we try to derive meaning from a text, the principal way we do this is by analogy. We take a key, symbol, concept, or idea from the text, and we compare it to something in our immediate experience. Good interpretation is largely about learning how to make good analogies, because man, not all analogies are equally good or useful. The basic form of a verbal analogy is A is to B as Y is to Z. You start with a relationship in the text, A to B, and you compare it with a relationship in your immediate experience, Y to Z. For example, I could say, Darth Vader is to Luke Skywalker as I am to my son Avery. By the way you choose to frame the analogy, you highlight certain aspects and downplay other aspects of the relationship. This analogy focuses on the father-son relationship of the characters. Ah, you're not my father! Ow! If I said Darth Vader is to Luke Skywalker as Snidely Whiplash is to Dudley Do-Right, then I'd be making a different comparison, one that highlights the villain-hero relationship. I'd also be making a wildly out-of-date reference, but old things are cool again, right? Every analogy is imperfect. We're comparing things, saying they're similar, not saying they're identical. Nevertheless, better analogies are going to have more levels of similarity than not. My Vader Skywalker father-son analogy is pretty weak, because for the most part I'm an active and benevolent part of my son's life. If one day I go insane and cut Avery's hand off while trying to capture and kill most of his friends, then it would be a better analogy. Basically, the more similarities there are between the relationship in the text and the relationship in real life that are being compared, the stronger the analogy is going to be, and the more useful it will be for the purposes of making meaning from it. The Vader-Skywalker relationship is going to be more meaningful if we reserve it for making analogies between abusive or absentee fathers and children who then have to struggle to differentiate themselves from that parent figure later in life. Some symbols, like the cross, are so obviously laden with meaning-making potential that they get used in analogies constantly. In the eighth chapter of Mark, it seems like Jesus specifically wants us to draw an analogy between his death on a cross and the experience of his disciples. Potential disciples are instructed to pick up their cross, which leaves us wondering what their cross is. The more important a symbol is to a story, the closer we should look at the details of that symbol to interpret their meaning. So when we try to make analogies to the cross, I think we should make those analogies as tight as possible. For example, a lot of people draw analogies between the cross and their own experience of suffering. But the cross isn't a good analogy for all kinds of suffering. Suffering from accidental or natural causes lacks the element of human intention involved in the gospel. Jesus didn't trip and fall and get crucified. Cancer is not your cross to bear. Even if we drill down to analogies that have to do with human intention causing suffering, we still have to be sure we get the relationships right. When we draw analogies to the cross, the salient characteristic I think we have to keep in mind is that the cross is a symbol of violent oppression done by powerful people against vulnerable people. A part of me dies whenever I hear people draw up analogies like this. All that social media criticism of insert successful Christian celebrity or mega church pastor here is just like when they crucified Jesus. No. It is not. Those brave American soldiers are giving up their lives just like Jesus. Uh, no. They're not. Jesus was alone and unarmed and forgave the people who were killing him. Giving legal rights, which I already enjoy, to LGBTQ persons is persecution of Christians, just like when they persecuted Jesus. Nope, 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 nope. All of these analogies fail because they invert the relationship between the powerful and the vulnerable persons in the text. Basically, when relatively privileged people start complaining about persecution and drawing analogies between themselves and Jesus and the cross, we should get very skeptical. Jesus' acceptance of the cross and invitation to his own disciples to pick up their crosses is about solidarity with the victims of oppression. Putting up with your annoying coworker is not picking up your cross. The traffic you endure on your daily commute is not your cross. The indignities of aging, the awkward moments at your family reunion, the existence of music which you don't like being played on the radio, none of these are your cross. When we start talking about seeing metaphorical crosses in society around us, we ought to be sure that we're talking about the suffering of vulnerable people due to oppression and the voluntary participation in that suffering by followers of Jesus. At least, if we want the analogy to be meaningful. Here we are on camera. This is Lectionaric, where I deliver irreverent, geeky takes on texts which are sacred to me. For now, I mainly focused on the Christian scriptures following the Revised Common Lectionary. My intent is to release a video every week ahead of the lectionary, and if that goes well, then to start diving into other kinds of texts. Comic books, novels, movies, video games, anything that draws my interest, basically. Be sure to like and subscribe, and let me know down in the comments what text you would like to see me interpret.
Thanks. Then I I want you to like hit start hitting me on the top of the head and the shoulders. Ah! 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 Okay. Ah!